I'm going to go back into my control panel, and inside the control, control panel, we'll slide this down, and we will select Windows Firewall. Now, when you have a firewall, it can have different settings depending upon where your machine happens to be. And this is more relevant, for example, on laptops, because you don't always pick up your big old desktop machine and <laughs> drag it around, especially now that we have online gaming as opposed to LAN parties like in the day. But if you have laptop machines, you may be plugged in to um, a wireless network at the coffee shop. Or maybe you go to a fast food restaurant and they offer free, free Wi-Fi. Or maybe you're at a hotel and they have an Ethernet cable that you can plug into. Well, this is considered a public network and you're not going to want to be as open as you were back in your home network or in your corporate network. So they have home or private networks, they have public networks, and if you're a member of a domain, they will also have one that's called a domain network. Now if you want to, you can have it set so it says the firewall is on, incoming connections, we're going to block everything that's not on the allowed list. Uh, this is a home or private network, and it will notify me when it blocks a brand new program. So if somebody's trying to scan my machine and I've blocked it, it'll let me know. Now this is a good thing, because if I want to set up a, I don't know, a Minecraft server or something like that, and people are trying to come in, it'll pop up a dialog box and say, by the way, we've, we've blocked this particular program. Then I know I have to go into the firewall and say, allow a particular application. On the public network, notice something interesting, is that it goes through and it does the exact same settings, but I'm not actively connected to a public network. Now I can change my notification settings. If somebody's scanning me and I don't want to hear about it, I can go in and I can say, don't notify me. So if somebody's scanning me, don't tell me, don't tell me, I don't care, la 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 la, and then <laughs> I won't know if something's popping in and popping in and popping in. But you can go in and you can say block incoming connections, including those of the allowed programs. This is when I am putting my shields up. It's like Star Trek, engage shields. Nothing can come in that is not originating from my machine. So if I have somebody from the outside that is trying to initiate communications, can't do that. But if I am waiting for a response from something, like if I send a packet to a web server, that web server is coming back to me, but it is a reply packet. It is coming in and saying, hey, this is, in, uh, this is an established connection, and the firewall will let that through. It's just if you're sitting there not communicating with you know, Bob's machine, and Bob's machine all of a sudden starts communicating with you, the firewall will shut that off if we would like. Now, some other options that we have in here is I can go in, just turn it on, turn it off. I can restore any default settings that we had. And I also have some advanced settings. Now, these advanced settings can get pretty crazy because this is setting up what essentially is a layer 7 firewall. This firewall not only looks at the source IP address, the destination IP address, the port number, and all of that, but it can also go all the way up to an application. Do I want to allow a program in? Do I want to block a program from coming in? Or do I want a program out, or do I want to block a program from coming out? And you'll notice that it has what are called inbound rules and outbound rules. This does not refer to the fact of, are we talking out to the internet? or are we talking into our, uh, into our company or our private network? That has nothing to do with it. It is saying, is the packet coming into the box, into your computer, or is it flowing out of your computer, regardless of what network you're sending this out to? Is it coming in, or is it going out? Now, if you have something that you're always going to block, for example, Telnet. I do not have a Telnet machine on here. I don't want to hear anything about Telnet. So I am just going to simply say, no Telnet. That would be an inbound rule. Now, if in some cases I want to Telnet from my machine to manage a switch or check an SMTP server or whatever, I could set an outbound rule that says, allow Telnet, but only to these particular IP addresses. So you can pick and choose. Inbound rules are usually absolutely no. Outbound rules are, well, maybe sometimes we'll go ahead and allow that type of communication to go out. So I can go out and I can say I want to create a brand new policy and we'll do an inbound rule. So I'll say new rule and in this new rule it's going to go into a wizard. Now I said that this is a layer 7 firewall. 
It's not the fastest. It's not the most complete. You don't have all sorts of configurations that you would have if you were setting up, you know, a real firewall, a hardware firewall, or maybe even a Cisco router. But it does do a pretty good job. The first thing that it'll do is you have to identify interesting traffic. Traffic that you want to do something with. Whether you want to allow it or you want to deny it, that's what you're setting up here. So I could go in and I could say, base it on a program. If I do it based on a program, I have to say all programs, or I have to go to the specific executable, or I can even go in and just browse to it. Now, if I say a port, this is going to be a TCP or a UDP port. We're talking TCP IP. And what I would do is, is I would say a specific port number. And since it's an inbound rule, that means I'm going to say it's coming to a specific local port, like port 23 for Telnet or port 80 as a web server. If I wanted to, I could also go in and say something that's predefined. This is where Microsoft has said, you know, you don't have to go on the web and try and find out what is used, for example, for branch cache. This is already set for you. So we have branch cache, we have core networking, we have file and print sharing, we have home group, we have remote desktop, remote assistance, and you can just go in and pick one of these, and all the configuration topics like port numbers and protocol numbers is already populated for you. You don't have to go through and try and figure all this stuff out. But what we're going to do is we're going to do a custom rule. So I'm going to say next, and with a custom rule, it essentially goes through the same thing, it's just not wizardized. So I can say a particular program, but I'm going to say this is for all programs. Now, does that mean I'm blocking all programs? No, it means I'm blocking all programs that match some criteria I'm going to be setting later. So I'm going to go through and say all programs, and it says, okay, well, what specific criteria are you looking for? We're going to say um, this is going to be a TCP packet, and it is going to be for a particular port, and the port is 23. And in fact, I'm going to do 23, and I'm going to do 25. Chat area, does anybody know what TCP ports 23 or TCP port 25 is dealing with? It's two different services. Do you know what these port numbers are? And these are what are called well-known port numbers. You have the first 1024 ports are whatever. They're specific to a particular application, like 443 is SSL, port 80 is HTTP, port 23 is Telnet, port 25 is SMTP. These are all industry standards. Now, you have a block above that that are called, um, what the heck are they called? Common port numbers or assigned port numbers. And these are ones that they're not official, but they're kind of agreed upon inside the industry that this is what we want it to be. Then you have what are called ephemeral port numbers or known as dynamic port numbers. This is kind of picked out of a hat at random. Now, why would I have a random port? Well, let's say that I'm going to go in and I'm going to talk to your web server. Your web server is sitting on the standard port of port 80. But I may have different uh, browser tabs or different browsers that are going to your machine. So it's all coming from my IP address, but I have to have a way of determining which browser screen gets the particular graphic update or the text. So what I will do is I will send a packet to you with the destination port of port 80 to your IP address. And my source port will be just one of those ephemeral ports, one of those dynamic ports like 2375 for tab 1 and uh, 6284 for tab 2. So when your web server replies back with the graphics, it sends it to that destination port that I said was my source port, 2398. Okay, sends it back to 2398. My application now knows, oh, that's for tab one, or that's for Internet Explorer browser, or this is over for Firewall on the third tab, or uh, Firefox on the third tab. So you typically don't block out the dynamic ports because you don't know what application is going to use it, but you can definitely identify the well-known ports. So we have all of that. This is for the local port, or I can even specify the remote port. So uh, let's say that I want to block this stuff out. I am going to say all ports with a destination of port 23 or a destination of port 25. So if my machine is trying to tell that to another machine, I'm going to block that out. If my machine tries to send SMTP mail to a SMTP server, it uses the destination port of port 25, we're going to block that out. 
So then I'll say next, and it says, well, do you want to apply this to any specific IP addresses? Now we have our local IP addresses, which means if I have multiple IP addresses on my network card, or I have multiple network adapters, I can say, okay, on this side it's okay, but on this side we're just going to block it out. So you can pick and choose. This is the remote IP addresses, so I could say, um, for example, I haven't said whether this is allow or deny. I can say allow port 23 to this IP address, allow port 25 to this IP address as well, and now I've said even though I'm blocking out Telnet or I'm blocking out SMTP, if I'm going to these particular IP addresses, then it's okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to say any. Then we'll go in and it'll say, what do you want me to do? So we've identified the interesting part of the traffic, the port number, now we tell the firewall, do I allow the connection? Do I allow the connection if it's secured with something like IPsec? Or do I just simply block the connection? And that's how you can go through and create a, a, a firewall, whether it's an inbound rule or an outbound rule. It's really up to you depending upon how you want to have this system communicate.